Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world, where big egos, bigger budgets, and just plain bad luck can make things go horribly wrong. And we're going behind the scenes of these disastrous, never-ending, and often dangerous productions to find out why it was a shit show. Hello, friends. This is It Was a Shit Show. I am Ian, joined as always by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hello. So today we're going to do things a little different and start. What? That was a nutty professor. Hello. That was, good. That was that a was nutty really nut. I got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we're going to do things a little different today and start with your overall opinions of today's film, uh, The Nutty Professor. Have either of you actually seen this? Before? I hadn't seen it before. Either yeah, until <laughs> until you know the homework. Yeah, hadn't seen it. Did not know that it was a precursor movie to the Nutty Professor that we all know and love. Yeah, <laughs> and love. <laughs> and love. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, love's a strong word. I don't think actually. I actually don't think I've seen that version of the Nutty Professor either. Like I'd seen neither of them. Hmm. But yeah, I'd never seen this or heard of it. I, I felt like it took a weird turn. Like, oh, well, yeah. no, it's, oh, yeah. it started. It started awkwardly. I'm trying to. It went nowhere. And it's kind of aimless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as I was watching, I'm like, "Oh, this is just like Jerry Lewis's retelling of Jekyll and Hyde." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, that's okay. Exactly that's yeah, for sure. that's that's kind of a fun idea. Like, let's take this this gothic horror, you know, story, mm -hmm. and let's turn it into a comedy. And I thought that was a pretty pretty fun idea. But like the character that he became, like what a dick, man! Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, and, that and that's the, the idea. Point. That's the idea. That's the point, right? Yeah. But then I was reading about Jerry Lewis as a person, uh -huh. and I'm like, I mean, he's not too far off from who he actually was. Yeah, I was his... gonna say, wasn't his like um, Hyde version just like it's just him? Well, he it, he was actually doing a kind of an impression of Dean Martin, who okay. the two of them they became famous together as mm. he was the the comedic talent, and Dean Martin was his straight man. Uh -huh. that, that and they 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 came up in prominence yeah. and were just enormously huge, uh, very successful. And so he's actually kind of doing a Dean Martin thing. Okay. Which when you watch it, when you know that going in, it kind of makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and it's because they had a huge falling out and didn't talk to each other for like thirty years or oh, something I like see. that. And uh, was the falling out after this film? No, before. And so oh, so okay. so in a way, <laughs> he was kind of like, That's... I'm gonna I'm gonna be a an asshole oh, and pretend shit. to be like Dean Martin. That's amazing. Yeah. He's like, yes. oh, that son of a bitch. He did me wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he's, he's a womanizing piece of shit. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to be in he's this like, movie. I'm going to make this movie and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it as Dean. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, my overall thoughts of this movie, if I can remember it from when we watched it two weeks ago. Two um, weeks? We watched a many. We watched it a long time ago, didn't we? Because we got to, this recording got delayed. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but um, yeah, wild stuff. <laughs> and also just like super typical old movie shenanigans where there's just whole sections of this movie where like nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. There's just like weird long scenes that kind of like go like the scene where he's transforming for the first time into the nutty professor is like on forever. What yeah. is <laughs> happening? Like don't, it's so fucking weird. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love transformation scenes. Like yeah. one of my favorite <laughs> ones is an American werewolf in London. And like that's just fucking awesome. Yeah. And I was all watching this. All right, this is kind of cool. I'm like, okay, now he's a different color. And, and the, now he's a different color. I, I think he <laughs> was he's like a, a third color. Yeah. yeah. And then I think he was kind of like a werewolf at one he point. He did. Like he had like hairy hands. He's like like oh, made him look all yeah. Yeah. What? I, I mean, this movie like had wacky parts, but then the rest of the movie wasn't wacky. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so like it felt like there was a disconnect there. When, yeah. when, he, when he's the evil self, it kind of flatlines. Right. Because it's not as interesting. Right. And yeah, his Frank, his Professor Frank character is yeah. like way more funny I think, and yeah. interesting. Because I think the beginning likable. is actually yeah. really fun. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. the And the, the comedy is funny. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. Where, where he's, he's great as a as a comedic. Like yeah. he's he's he, like any comedian or any actor you talk to now, like who's like your who are who are your like influences? Nine out of ten I'm gonna say Jerry Lewis. Yeah, he's like the a whole big, the big whole bit one. with like the pocket watch that like whenever he opens it was like this college <laughs> college fight song. <laughs> Yeah, that like a was whole band. So that was really so funny. <laughs> well, and like the whole the whole sequence where he's uh, with the dean. Oh yeah, and like he's on the chair. Yeah, and doing then he Shakespeare. Puts, <laughs> but no, 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 no. When he's on the chair when he first meets him. Oh yeah, and he yeah, keeps yeah. sinking into the seat, and yeah. then he puts a 
like that little one little book, tiny book, book under <laughs> like his a magazine. Butt. Yeah, and then suddenly he's sitting up like perfectly straight. Yeah, all that stuff was really good, and the and the the exercise scene was actually pretty good. Uh, uh-huh. But then it just yeah, it just kind of like went aimless, and then by the end of it, it was like he like came clean, but he didn't really need to, and he was like, there was no motivation for him to feel bad, like. Like, he didn't do something that hurt someone in a really bad way that he felt guilty like about. Like an irreversible and wanted, yeah, hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, I got to come clean about it. He just, like... Was embarrassed. Yeah. He just suddenly just goes, well, I, by the way, I, I I was that person. I'm, I'm that yeah. Guy. He like, End of movie. It was almost like he couldn't... Like, he it did that typical thing that all these movies do where he's up on a stage and he's, like, doing his whole Dean Martin thing. And then, like, he's like, oh, I've been... Like, you know, he and his voice <laughs> kept changing. That was actually pretty cool. It pretty was good. good yeah, yeah. But then it was, like, halfway through that scene, instead of, like that turning into some comedy moment where he's like, oh shit, and he's trying to like go back and take more of the chemical stuff and like keep up the ruse. Like he a just not Mrs. Doubtfire like situation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Instead yeah. of like doubt firing it and making him like <laughs> continue <laughs> on, it's like he just gave up and was just like, well shit, you guys. Sorry. It's yeah, me. And, and, and why <laughs> did like professor. that's what I'm saying. It's like and he didn't have a reason to give yeah, up. It was like, like there wasn't <laughs> something that he made him just go, <laughs> right. I I gotta stop doing this. Like, it was almost just like you guys, listen, we got to end this movie. So um, <laughs> yeah. he's just going to have to come clean in this scene for no reason whatsoever. Well, and then no one learned and their lesson. Because the at the end, like, Stella walks oh, away yeah. with the bottle of the tonic in her back pocket. Like, Right? <laughs> that was yeah. so wild. Like, okay, the implication there was that she's like, well, I love him when he's, like, his nerdy professor form. But, like, I'm going to use this bit for in the bedroom. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 right? like eyebrows, eyebrows. I know, right? <laughs> that was what... Yeah, that was what I got from it was that it was like a like she's like, well, like he's sweet. But like the other guy was like, damn, he was hunky. And I kept that kept happening through the whole movie where she was like, like she was actually like pretty um, like f- like not feminist, but like she was pretty like, you know, I don't like you. You're a playboy. And like, you know, she didn't like the Dean Martin style character yeah, he yeah, was right. doing. But then, like, she would... Kind of. But then she was just, like, her character was just forced to be there. Yeah. But (laughs) then she also... So in one breath, she'd just be like, how rude. You're the worst. And then she'd be like, but I can't stay away from him. And it, like, made no sense. Yeah, right. It's like, pick a lane. Uh, This episode of the podcast is uh, brought to you by Professor Kelp's Blue Chew uh, (laughs) chemical... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Chemical concoction. (laughs) Any other final thoughts before or... Um, I don't think, jump into this. I don't think I need to see this movie again. <laughs> yeah, it was. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Like you said, uh, there were like really funny moments that were just basically evened out by like just a lot of boring nothing happening. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything for Clint's closet? Well, I don't have anything Jerry Lewis related or Dean Martin, <laughs> oh my God. but I figured the one thing that I do have uh, is also kind of related to a little bit of a professor who also suffers with like duality issues, right? Okay. And it's my Rick Sanchez portal gun. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nutty professor for yeah, sure. Right? So if I shoot, sure. I can shoot it on the wall and I can shoot a portal. We can just go and jump dimensions. Damn. Ooh. Yeah. See, there you go. That's awesome. So I, I brought my, my Rick Sanchez portal gun. Love cool. it. Cool. Well, uh, so today let's talk. Um, what? Oh my God. No, what is he doing? I lied. Are you fucking kidding me? What's going on? You had me watch a movie for nothing? You son of a bitch. Did you make... This is... uh, today's episode has nothing to do with the nutty professor. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you straight to hell. What <laughs> the shit? I live with this man. I cannot <laughs> trust this man. I might have to get divorced. I mean, there's a spare what bedroom down fuck? here, right? I think I know where Ian's sleeping tonight, right? <laughs> I need to like start questioning things you do way more. Because I'll ask him questions. I'll be like, like today I was... I was like, oh, are we doing, like, follow-ups for the podcast? And he's like, no. And I was just like, oh, okay, why not? And he's just like, don't worry about it. And I'm like, okay. Boop, 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 boop. Like, didn't even think about yeah, it. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> keep it take along. Just, 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 sure, yeah, okay. I'm just along for the ride. Yeah, I'm here. Here, here we go. <laughs> okay, Lisa's gonna... like, is this going to be a regular episode? I was like, yeah, it's going to be a regular episode. Don't worry. Like, I'll I'll be home at a good enough time. And I'm sure I probably will. But, like, you're, I'm already, you're, making, you're making me a liar to my own wife. <laughs> well, I'm like. The, the the best thing about that is that he wasn't responding to your messages. And so I'm responding to you like, yep, it's a totally normal episode. Mur, 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 mur. Nutty professor, <laughs> LOL. Like, I had no fucking idea. Right, yeah, because he <laughs> duped you too. <laughs> Son of a bitch. 
Okay, what's this fucking switcheroo okay. nonsense? Well, so it occurred to me that I had never seen a Jerry Lewis film. And okay. so, uh, it's, and it was widely, it's widely agreed that it that is his best film. And so I was like, all right, let's watch that. Ooh, that's his um, best film? Yeah, I know, oh, right? Yeah. So um, <laughs> this time last year, we discussed the still as of yet unreleased Empires of the Deep. Oh my God. Okay. We're doing some. I figured, in keeping with that theme, let's discuss what may be the most famous, unreleased, sought by film buffs for decades, lost to history films of all time The Day the Clown Cried. I want to temper our emotions here. Uh, the myth that has grown around the film, The Day the Clown Cried, is that it is a comedy. But that couldn't be any further from the truth. It is a very serious film that deals with a very sensitive subject. And you'll un- you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, after researching this, I wanted to give this film, the, the this script, the credit it deserves. Uh, because talking about it is as if it's a comedy is kind of does an immense disservice to what was attempted. Hmm. So forewarning, this will be a bit of a heavy episode. Um, while this movie may never be released, the script has been online for years. Um, I'm going to summarize the entire film so we understand what the filmmakers were going for and why calling it a comedy is unjustified. Okay, really quick though. Does the, does this tie into Jerry Lewis? Like, was he attached no. to it in any kind of way? No. That was just straight I just, up. I've never seen a Jerry Lewis film before. He is diabolical. <laughs> as a complete red herring. <laughs> <laughs> okay. An egotistical, unhappy, past his prime clown gets fired from the circus and is arrested in Nazi Germany for drunkenly making fun of Hitler. Though not Jewish, he is thrown into a Nazi internment camp as a political prisoner. After months of wallowing in his own pity, fighting with the other prisoners, he discovers his original spark of being a clown by entertaining the Jewish children on the other side of the barbed wire fence. As the kids grow to love him and he continues to get in trouble for playing with them, the Nazis decide to exploit this gift. They order the clown to keep the kids in line as they board a train boxcar headed for Auschwitz. Once there, he's thrown into a cell for escaping prison. The Nazis order the clown to lead the children into the gas chambers. He refuses at first but is offered a full release if he does. He agrees, but on the condition he can spend some time with the kids. He entertains them one last time, then they walk to the gas chambers. Each one goes inside, and the clown turns to leave. But one girl stops him, terrified. He takes her hand and joins her inside. The chamber door closes, fade to black. Today, let's talk The Day the Clown Cried. Oh, that's so heavy. Do we have to? <laughs> yeah, damn, man. I don't know if I like this game, this switcheroo <laughs> game. Okay, okay, but I'm curious. I really want, I'm really interested to hear this story, though. Yeah. This is still an actual shit show, so don't worry. Okay. The script came to my desk, and I wasn't going to read it because there were 25 other scripts on my desk. I had turned a page somewhere in the script and just went, Holy Jesus Christ Almighty. Holy Jesus Christ Almighty. I said, I'm going to make that movie. Okay, The Day the Clown Cried was written by Joan O'Brien and Charles Denton. The script circled around Hollywood in the early 60s, and with Milton Berle, Dick Van Dyke, and even Bobby Darin offered the role of the clown. Then in 1971, Belgian producer Nathan Washberger optioned the script, meaning he he like, he like paid the writers to hold the script for a right. certain amount of time until he can secure a green light for production. And he went to the only movie star he believed who could make this film. 1971, who do you think that would be? Hmm, 71? Give us a hint. Give us a hint. The Nutty Professor. Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. Okay. Wait, you said this wasn't attached to Jerry Lewis at all. You <laughs> son of look, he did it twice. No, his his like <laughs> bitch. twice. His, I got you twice. His, I, li- it, I lied again. His programming for lying is just like spot on. <laughs> I'm scared. Yes. 
Jerry Lewis. Okay. Okay. So this there was it was a connection, um, but because you can't watch this movie, I figured let's just watch a Jerry Lewis yeah. movie. I guess like I'm not following that thought process of just like that serious plot and then just being like, you know, who could do this movie? Jerry Lewis. It's like what? What? Yeah. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Um, it w- we'll get into um, why I think they thought of Jerry Lewis. Okay. But, hmm. Um. So Lewis was first given the script in 1965, and he said he was not ready for that. Uh, But when it came back around in 1971, he believed this was a story that needed to be told. Hmm. Lied again. There are quotes. Mm, I knew you oh lied. God, the... Clint, you will be our Jerry Lewis. Mm, Glavin. Uh, yeah. So this is Jerry Lewis about playing the character and making the movie. I knew the loneliness in him, the fear, the desperation that lay deep in his soul. I knew that to play him would be no casual affair, but the greatest artistic wrench of my life. So mm. he sees it as a very important. This is like his Oscar moment. Well, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say it's like he. I don't think. F- from his perspective, it wasn't ever an Oscar movie. It was like, it, it just, he felt like this is something that needed to be told. Right. Like, um, and if he was the one that was going to have to make it happen, he was going to do it. I had a talk with myself in the mirror. I said, understand that one morning you're feeling great about performing in this film, and then the next day you want to throw up. That's what you're going to feel for the entire film. Because reading it disgusts you. But playing it is a double disgust. So in O'Brien and Denton's script, the clown's name is Carl Schmidt. And he's very unsympathetic uh, about what's going on. But once Lewis decided to make the film, he rewrites the script himself. And he makes the clown more in line with himself. Okay. uh, Giving him some moments of like physical comedy uh, and... Like there's there's an opening scene where he's in the in the circus and doing kind of like Jerry Lewis bits. And then like when he's entertaining the children, he he's like kind of doing Jerry Lewis bits. Right. And he also makes him more ambivalent to the situation. Mm. He also changes the clown's name to Helmut Dork. H-E-L-M-U-T. D O O R K. Helmut Dork. Helmut Dork, which I mean, to be fair, that sounds. I'm no no German. That sounds like a pretty German name. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> but I, uh, I, according to Lewis, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, uh, he says it's Helmut the Great, um, but it's a fun clown name. Mm, that's okay. the idea behind it, but it does make it kind of seem stupid. It's bringing it. Yeah, that's like bringing it down. A few yeah, times. right. <laughs> yeah. So this would be Jerry Lewis's first dramatic role. Uh, he did some stuff later on, um, but. This would be like his first time he's going to try, try it out. <laughs> going yeah. straight. What were what were some of the dramatic roles he did later? Uh, he played kind of like a straight man in uh, King of Comedy, the Scorsese movie about uh, Robert De Niro being a stand up. OK. Anyway. Um, so to prepare, Lewis said he lost 35 pounds in six weeks by eating only grapefruit. Oh, my God. OK, that's what I got to do. <laughs> That's too far. It's too far. Just grapefruit? That's it? It's the opposite of the Marvel diet. <laughs> yeah. Is that, the, is that the Christian Bill, the machinist diet? The machinist diet? diet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I heard, I heard for, for Christian Bell, it was like he just ate one apple and one cup of coffee like a day. I'm like, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> was so skinny in that yeah, yeah, that's this is you're like, but Christian Bale did, he it. did it. He's healthy. He's Jerry bad. Lewis did Jerry it. Lewis did it. He lived to be ninety one. He's a professor. <laughs> yeah, he, he has he knows. He has a PhD. Yeah, he's he done I saw him I'm pretty sure I've seen him in a lab somewhere yeah. figuring this out. <laughs> uh Lewis was committed to authenticity, so much so that he hired a former gas chamber operator as his technical advisor. Oh my Are you fucking God. kidding me? A man who spent the rest of his life asking for forgiveness. Oh, so, my God. Yeah. 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 Lewis shopped the project to multiple studios for distribution. And they all didn't want to touch it. They're like, what is this? Um, this made Lewis even more determined to make it. Yeah. So uh, filmed in April of 1972 in Sweden. So uh, the beginning is in uh, France and then the rest of the um, 
the movie is filmed in Sweden. But he did a lot of press in France and Sweden in the lead up to the production because, uh, I mean, he's one of the he was one of the biggest stars. I mean, think about mm. height of Jim Carrey. Right, right, right. Um, and uh, so so there's a lot of behind the scenes footage and images of the movie. So Washerberger said he was financing the film himself with a Swedish company, Europa Films. They wanted, and they were the ones that wanted to make it in Sweden. Uh, Washburger's filmography is 15 credits long on IMDb. None I've ever heard of, and only one of them has an audience rating higher than six out of ten. <laughs> so, uh, are they all just like they're like probably all what we would consider foreign films because he was Belgian, right? Yeah, yeah. And and there's some American films, but they're all like B, B tier ah, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lewis never saw Washburger during production. Well, really? So, hey, he thanks, like, really thanks for your at... money, anonymous person I've never seen before. <laughs> I was going to say, was he just really good at like hiding or like really small <laughs> or just like not there? He was just dressed as an extra the whole right, time. Right, right, right. Uh, no, he was not there because two weeks in, production already runs into money issues. Mm-hmm. Checks for the cast and crew are already bouncing and suppliers from equipment rentals to the film processing haven't received money at all. Wow. So, uh, two Lewis, weeks in. two weeks in. Wow. So like I said, this is actually a shit show. Um, Lewis is just like, where the fuck is this guy? Um, yeah. he's, he apparently, uh, went to South France somewhere. Mm. And, uh, so Lewis is just like <laughs> constantly trying to contact him. Yeah, yeah. Finally does. Uh, and Washburger's like, oh, don't, don't worry. The, the checks are in the mail. Don't, don't worry about it. That's never but, true. But. If you wouldn't mind covering the bills for now. Oh, my God. Oh, no. And he'll reimburse no. him. Oh. No. Ugh. Don't do it, Jerry. <laughs> Don't Jerry. do it, no. <laughs> Such a bad idea. So when Lewis was not on set, he was writing checks with his own money. Oh, my God. And those again, nice, he was those, very rich at the time. Yeah, with his name, Professor Money. Yeah. Um, and, and on the phone with... Uh, on the phone trying to raise money with other producers and uh, trying to track down Washburger. Mm. He spent two million of his own money to keep the movie going. Uh, That's and so much money. In 70, That's like 70, probably 70, like $7 million, million dollars now or like what? what Do is the math. Now? Hurry, someone mm. do inflation math. Not, not me. Well, okay, now that I can get back on my iPad. Your portal gun doesn't do that? I know, right? (laughs) Yeah, go back to 1972 and ask somebody, quick, how much is $2 million? That doesn't make any sense. I'll be right back. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm back. How much? (laughs) $14.7 million. Uh, Okay. All right. Uh, okay. How is Jerry, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's doing all right. He's uh, a little depressed. Wait, this... did you travel <laughs> to meet Jerry Lewis in 1972 to ask him what the inflation would yeah. be yeah. from now? He's Seems a like professor. A thing. <laughs> by Seems the like way, a thing he would know. <laughs> by the way, um, I'm I'm from two th- 2023. <laughs> How much would this money be? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's figure it out. You what the hell would I know? Yep. I don't know what the American economy <laughs> is going to be like. I love the idea of Clint being like, hey, so I'm doing a podcast about that movie that you made that never came out. Um, you know, the day <laughs> what? the What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Glavin. <laughs> what do you mean it never came out? Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. Portal ride on back. Well, it's a spoiler. <laughs> No cars on the set. <laughs> He's like yeah. in the middle of filming it, just like this never comes out. By the way, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you fail horribly. <laughs> As I jump into a portal and flip him off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that would have he would have saw that because at the time he was addicted to Percodan. Um, wait, 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 okay, Percodan. This was in, per- in the uh, 70s. It was Percodan. But how many Quaaludes is that? Yeah, how many Quaaludes <laughs> is it for Percodan? It's one Percodan. And so he was kind of riding a little high every once in a while. Mm. Um, and all that stress making the film put him on the verge of having a heart attack. Jesus. Jeez. So actors who have spoken about making the film have differing opinions about his production. One said that Lewis took the job very seriously he knew exactly what he wanted in each scene and didn't take it lightly. This actor was paid. Uh, another said <laughs> he was erratic and mean and was on painkillers for back pain and would act very strangely. She was not paid. Mm. Mm. Producer Jack Korshak was friends with Lewis before this movie. Um, and then when they started it, uh, 
by the end, by the end, they were enemies. The, I am so the, glad that this podcast is so easy to make because <laughs> I can't afford to lose friends. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, jump through a pod- portal. This Book podcast you. is <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is very rarely a shit show. Wait, yeah. suddenly a portal opens and a clink comes out and he's like, "Hey you guys, by the way, this episode never comes out." Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For you. <laughs> You're wasting your time on this podcast yeah. in general. In general, yeah. Ah, damn it. Uh, One of you dies in three years. Oh. And uh, I won't tell you which. Oh god. And it's me. It's no. so. <laughs> That's why I came back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what the fuck? It wouldn't be you. <laughs> it would be one of us. Oh, that's dark. That's dark, Clint. Uh, <laughs> piece of shit. Maybe I have. And you die by my hand. I know, right? Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, well, let's be honest. That's going to be me. <laughs> uh, so, Korshak, the last word between the two of them was a telegram from Lewis to the smallest man in town. Oh my God, man, that is some petty <laughs> telegram. Can we still send telegrams? Is that still a thing? Can I? Could I still send a telegram to somebody? I doubt it. No, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, they'd have to have a receiver. Right? I'm sure. I'm sure there's some the smallest stop man stop. <laughs> wow. I'm, yeah, I'm beep, pretty beep, sure beep, there's beep, some beep. random startup that's gonna like try to get that. We need to go back. Yeah, fucking hipsters. You guys, we're all about analog. <laughs> yeah, analog is where it's at. Yeah, man. I like some analog things. So after filming had wrapped, three things happened. First, obviously, Lewis sued Washburger for breach of contract. Right. Second, screenwriter Joan O'Brien claimed Lewis and Washburger never actually purchased the screenplay from her. Oh. Washburger oh, paid he her just... 5000 to option the option script. Option it. But per her agreement, she would be paid five uh, fifty thousand once filming got started. This was never paid to her. Oh wow. my god! And therefore, they were making the film illegally. Oh wow! You guys, this is what the strike was all about. This kind of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But that was so, that's some shenanigans. Sh- right there. Shady shit. So, according to his son, Jerry Lewis had got halfway through production before he found out that the script wasn't purchased. Mm. And technically, he wasn't allowed to rewrite it. Oh, that's um, right. Because, yeah, because he rewrote it, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, and so he rewrote material that he did not Deno. own. Mm. So O'Brien like, no, counters no. this, claiming in court that Lewis knew from the start. Lastly, Europa Films, uh, distributors of Bergman Films. I don't know. <laughs> I don't Europa know. Films. Yeah, yeah. Europa <laughs> Films. <laughs> Uh, claims they were still owed $600,000 and until they were paid, they'd hold all on, they would hold on to all the film stock. Okay. The At, Transporter, that's a Europa film. Oh, so they're oh, still around. And Taken, Taken okay. was Europa. All right. Yeah. So at this point, things get a little vague and Lewis's accounts of what happens next kind of changes depending on when you're talking to him. And we're not really given closure to a lot of this. He says he had only watched a rough cut of the footage once and he went back to the U.S. and has not looked at it since. In February of 1973, Lewis appears on the Dick Cavett show and an audience member asks when the film would be coming out because he did all that press for it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. The day the clown cried will be fit. I hopefully will finish cutting it the next six or seven weeks. And uh, we've been invited to the Cannes Film Festival, so I think we will open it then in May. Then it'll be released in America. So via this, it sounds like he's going to get it done. Right. right? He wants to get it done. But after that quote, the film just disappears. Now, had the film released in 1973, it might have been the first fictional film to depict concentration camps. So it's a big deal. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, because, like, um, let me just say that that's, like, too close. It's way too close. Like, people <laughs> like, who were children in those camps are, like, in their 30s at this yeah, point. And they're right. just like, I don't want to fucking watch that They could have been extras like, on that set. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, huh. It's yeah. too close. Like, even, like, probably, when did, like, Schindler's List come out? 93. That's like still too close. I mean, I know that movie's great, but like, (laughs) holy shit. Like, y'all, we need some space. So, okay. Um, 
This is what Jerry Lewis said about uh, the film. I thought the day the clown cried would be a way to show we don't have to tremble and give up in the darkness. Helmet would teach us this lesson. It was all I wanted to establish. Just a reminder. So every few years, Lewis does speak about it. Um, He did speak about it, uh, but he was very guarded. In 1982, in his autobiography, Lewis said that he was still waiting on the court cases between O'Brien and Washburger to be settled. Ten years later? Yeah. Oh, my God. And the movie remains in Sweden. However... It's just like, it's just like lock, under lock and key somewhere. Like yeah, because the, the they finished, haven't been paid. Yeah, the finished and, cut. Yeah. Wow. Well, not, not finished. Oh, just not the finished. footage. Just, yeah. just okay. the footage. Gotcha. So just nothing, the raw nothing... footage. Gotcha. Okay. However, he has in his possession, now again, this is what he says in his biography, that he has in his possession the last three scenes, which he never wants to get out until the movie is done. Hmm. And he still desires to finish the movie with a few reshoots. Fortunately, though, the story is timeless. I can release it 10 years from now and it will hold up. One way or another, I'll get it done. The picture must be seen, and if by no one else, at least by every kid in the world who's only heard that there was such a thing as the Holocaust. So now comes the big question of respect. Is it respectful to make a film about the Holocaust? That answer has been proven to be yes, right? Like Schindler's List, well, right? Yeah, I mean, it just it depends on how you do yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. But more importantly, is it tasteful to inject humor into such a story? Again, I think it depends on how you do it. Yeah. 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 So from Marx Brothers to Charlie Chaplin up to Hogan's Heroes and Mel Brooks's, the producers have always like have always parodied Nazis. Mm -hmm. But the Holocaust, like Mel Brooks says he would never go there. Right. Right. That was something that he would never do. Yeah. And so there's most most significantly there was Life is Beautiful in 97 about a man shielding his son from the horrors of genocide by pretending this is all a game. That's the movie I'm thinking of because I was like, there is a Holocaust movie that's like, that has that kind of like levity and joy, joyful moments in it yes. to try to help sort of like navigate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh. yeah, okay, yeah, that's the movie I'm thinking of. I was yeah. I was going to look it up, but. Yes. Okay. So, and that that is kind of, um, I was watching this documentary about uh, the Holocaust and humor, and it has all these like Jewish comedians from David Cross to uh, Mel Brooks talking about it, uh, Gilbert Godfrey, and talking about how they all have their certain jokes and how Sarah Silverman really pushes that boundary. But in what as she says in the documentary is like this is important because unless we don't talk, we, if we don't, we never talk about it, like it sits there in darkness and it just like becomes taboo. And it like, right. we need, if we, she's like, there's, there's a dozens of genocides that have happened that we don't even talk about. Yeah. But through culture, we remember the Holocaust. Hmm. So it's a very, very interesting thing to navigate. Right. And wait, what's that documentary called? Uh, well, he the was last, like, the last laugh. The last laugh. The last lap. And it is on Netflix. So was Jerry Lewis ahead of his time? Over the years, the very taboo-ness of this movie being buried has made it a legend among film buffs. And in that time, the story has become a little twisted where it's sort of described as a comedy. Jerry Lewis as a clown helping Nazis in Auschwitz, like that sounds like a setup for a joke, right? right? Yeah. Just that, just that one sentence like makes it sound like, wait a minute. As if this movie is about a guy who continually helps put kids in the gas chambers. Like, like that's just a thing. It's like his job or something, yeah. right? When that isn't that's, that at all, right. right? Right. And anything you look up, like, it is, that's kind of how it's conveyed. Hmm. And it, it's because, because nobody has seen it, the story is kind of evolved. Right. People right? are just making guesses about, like, what the intentions were and what the story yeah. is. Because they've just heard stories about, like the the overall kind of plot and like yeah. what but yeah you like no one's seen it so like who the hell knows yeah because nothing about the content of the film is what's keeping it from coming out which i think is kind of interesting because like it, you know it's it's a tricky subject matter to mm-hmm. to navigate and to make a film about right yeah so it's interesting that none of the problems it's having about being released has anything to do with the what the movie is about. Y- yeah it's right everything legal from the writing from paying yes. and it's all that yes. yeah 
Yeah, uh, like no one saw it and went, it's so offensive. We need to like get rid of, we need to like yeah. not show this movie right. ever. Kind of, but we'll get to that. <gasps> oh. Okay. Oh, he's doing it. In 1992, Spy Magazine interviewed eight people who had actually seen the film or some form of it. Right. It included the original two writers, O'Brien and Denton, and of all people, Harry Shearer. Really? Okay. From The Simpsons. The Simpsons, right. yeah. Mr. Okay. Burns. Uh, some say Lewis screened it for them. Others were shown a bootleg version of it. Wait, wait, but but I thought that they didn't ever edit it. I, so like, I know this is where the things are like vague, like because I don't understand. Because based off of what Lewis said, they were holding on to all the film stuck, and he had all the, um, the the last like three reels. Right. So what does that mean? Yeah, it's like did he just show them some of like the scenes that were shot? Yeah, or, like and, did someone edit it at some point? Yeah, and he said I saw a rough cut of it. And he's like, I never watched it ever again. But from these stories, it sounds like they were saying that he, like Lewis like sat them down and was like, what do you think of my movie? So mm. it was Jerry Lewis, the two writers. And it, just a bunch of other. Bunch Harry Shearer for include, some reason. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Harry Shearer. So there's mentions of random issues like Lewis wearing brand new shoes in a scene that is meant to be months in the prison or uh, in the camp or the camp seemingly being underpopulated because of a lack of budget and like the Nazis are being like comically evil. So there's 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 the kind of mentioning that like maybe this movie is not like that great. Mm. Like uh that there's just some lack of attention to detail. Oh, okay. Yeah. And who was directing this? Him. You- Okay. Jerry Lewis. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I didn't mention that, did I? Yeah, no, no. Well, that's why I was wondering because I just realized, I'm like, wait, you talked about the writers. You talked about the producer who was just like, bye, and like, fuck off. Well, I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, yeah. You're you're right. That's my fault. But because Jerry Lewis always directed his own stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't put that together. Okay, so he was directing it. (laughs) Yes. And also acting in it. Okay. (laughs) With that kind of. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's just my emotion about it. Yeah. Okay. So all these people say that the main problem of the film is that Lewis isn't capable of pulling off that level of poignancy required for such a dramatic film. Uh, uh, yeah. So like, because he, he's pushing where he's never gone to. The nutty right? professor, you don't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't right. say. Uh, he didn't make a movie called The Stoic Professor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Harry Shearer is the only like celebrity who has seen it. Okay. And he is often interviewed about it, including that documentary. Okay. so interesting. Is he like, stop fucking asking me about this movie? No, he really likes talking about it. Oh, interesting. Okay. His opinion of the film, rightly or wrongly, has collectively shaped what outsiders think the movie actually is and the quality of it. Okay. Because he's the one that continues to talk Talk about about it. it. But there's only one guy that's talking about it. Right. I, I hope I'm never in that position. <laughs> <laughs> this is Harry Shearer. This movie is so drastically wrong. Its pathos and its comedy are so wildly misplaced that you could not, in your fantasy of what it might be like, improve on what it really is. Oh, my God. That's all you can say. I'm inclined to believe uh, Harry, though, and for this one. <laughs> that feels like probably what it is. All right, dude. I mean, it's, it's an interesting idea to try. And especially for the time that it was. Yeah. But again, it's Jerry Lewis, who mm-hmm. had never done anything dramatic before. Yeah. Who you would think who has had so much experience in filmmaking that he would have got made sure that all of his ducks were in a row. Yeah. That people would have gotten paid. And when they weren't, they would have stopped and said, okay, let's figure this out. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's not how movies are made. I don't know. Maybe like it's just, just balls rolling. Let's keep going with yeah. it. I don't know. Well, it sounds like this was made outside of the usual Hollywood system, so there wasn't yeah, a lot of it was that completely stuff in independent, place. Yeah. Right. And so he's just like so he was trying to keep it going by just paying out of his own pocket for, for everyone's salaries and shit, but it's like you can't like there there comes a point where you just can't keep something like that afloat, you know? Well yeah. didn't well didn't O'Brien why why weren't they like, Hey, you're into production, I never got paid. And out of that two million, couldn't he have been like, Oh, I'm sorry, here, check. Who knows? Well, we can't ask maybe, him maybe Lewis because he yeah. because he was just like fuck it I own it I'm Jerry Lewis maybe maybe yeah you know I I have no idea speaking of original screenwriter this is Joan O'Brien who has seen it it was a disaster just talking about it makes me very emotional oh man so her original idea that Jerry Lewis 
changed and rewrote was the one, the synopsis that you told us, right? Or was that the Jerry Lewis version? The version I typed out, that is the Jerry Lewis version. Okay. But it's not much different. Okay. Okay. Hmm. okay. It's, um, oh, the, that's the, right. The, he the, just made the character a little more likable and like added some yes. more kind of humor into yes. it. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's right. It. That's right. Like plot wise, it's the exact, exact same thing. Gotcha. Okay. Now, this is Joshua White. He was a director on uh, a couple of Jerry Lewis's telethons and he saw uh, a, a bootlegged version of it. Okay. He'd just gotten off Perkadan, and he was very proud of that. Then to see this film that was so important to him and that was almost incompetent was just sad. He felt the world had conspired against him to prevent him from completing it. He endowed it with great sadness. But it is so awful, you can't even laugh at it. Oh, man. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe maybe it was because he was high. Yeah. Like, he just yeah. wasn't he wasn't very good. But I also just feel like if you take all of the individual pieces of this that we've heard so far and like, listen, I know no one's read this. No one's seen it. So like, I don't know. I'm just I'm just spitballing here. But it's like you have a PR agent and a film critic writing a move a Holocaust movie starring a clown that's played by Jerry Lewis and directed by Jerry Lewis. And the producer just fucked off like all of that is just like. Of course this movie was bad. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, none of none of the ducks aligned. Like and it, it maybe because it was entirely because uh Washburger just completely swindled them. Right. right? Yeah. I, I, I think after however however many episodes that we've done, right, and all these movies we talked about that is a shit that's a shit show, I just feel like this one is probably just like the defining movie of a shit show. This and Empires of the Deep. So yeah. it's kind of <laughs> Serendipitous, or, or it was very, very smart on your end just to go on the same vein of movies not released. But, mm. like, yeah, exactly. I think you, you hit the nail right on the head there. And like, with him, and he, like you said, he, like being high on set, like he probably is thinking this is the greatest thing that he has ever made and that his eyes are just glowing with God's grandeur. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then he makes it. And then it's just like you finally see, like, when you come down from like a high or you come down from like, you know, being a little bit inebriated and you think, oh man, that was such a funny night. I was so funny. And then if you look back at footage of that night, you're like, I was not funny. <laughs> I was, I was an idiot. Um, I don't think it's that bad, but we'll get to that. What's, okay. the, what's not that bad? The, the movie. movie. The film. Okay. Oh, okay. Lastly, Jerry Lewis's son, Chris, says, I can't say I remember it being really great. Okay. So, very, okay. Very political answer. <laughs> At the end of the piece in Spy Magazine, they mentioned that different producers are trying to make the film again, but as it was originally written. Like like mm. not with any of Lewis's footage? Like, yeah, just, just like start over. Okay. And how recent was that article? That was 92. Okay. All right. 20 years after he started it. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. In 2004, Joan O'Brien died never giving Lewis the rights for the script. And like it never got, f I thought we were going to get back to the court. Like nothing happened. Like did yeah, it was I, that's what I'm like, saying. I don't know. That's where it gets vague because oh, I don't fuck. know if there's any closure to this, some of this stuff. Like they never settled. There was no judgment or anything. Yeah, like I have no idea. Weird. That's crazy because or, I, we or, at least got some like closure to Barth watch. But I mean, yeah. this is like even, even but longer. But yeah, it could be a thing where she just like was, no, no. I'm not, I'm never giving you the rights. Yeah. He's like, I'll give you 12 million, whatever. And he's like, she like, no, 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 never. Hmm. That kind of thing. Who knows? Uh, in 2009, Lewis was asked about the legend and the rumors that grew around the film. I think it's like bad advertising. For it to become what it has become seems unfair. Unfair to the project, unfair to all my good intentions, unfair to anyone that you will sit down and have them see what you're proclaiming is a finished work. It ain't finished. Yeah. Mm. In 2012, Lewis sat down for the documentary Der Clown to discuss it. He says, given the chance, he would do it again. Oh. He says, not a day goes by when he doesn't, doesn't think about it. Wow. When asked about why he doesn't like talking about it or why he buried it, he says, who goes around telling people they lost the lottery? He also says that he was ashamed of it. Mm. This is Jerry Lewis. Why? It was not good work. It was bad work. On the part of the writer, the director, the actor, the producer. None of this work was any good. 
And he's all of those. Wait, so he so he kind of changed. It sounded like he kind of changed his tune where he yeah. was just like, he's like, it was so good. And like, they just like conspired against me. And like, it was going to be my opus. And then he's just like, no, it was bad. Like, it yeah, was maybe. Not good. But with clear vision, he started looking at it going, what did I do? Yeah. So right? he doesn't. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show what kind of drugs are really good for creativity. I mean, just <laughs> like, look at the Beatles. And the... Definitely not Pergadan, whatever the hell that is. Yeah. Uh, in that documentary, he actually does talk about how he's not even talked to his like children about making. Really? It. Wow. Oh. You know, it's interesting because like I had no idea about this, and while I was watching the Nutty Professor, I admittedly like got on Wikipedia and looked at Jerry Lewis stuff, mm-hmm. and like none of that came up at all. At least yeah. not that I saw. The only thing that I saw is that he just didn't think women were funny. That's, oh yeah, that was the yeah. main thing that I saw. I mean, he has some. <laughs> yeah, scandals noted. A scandal noted. Uh, I also would never have guessed that from watching The Nutty, Nutty Professor. Professor. <laughs> In 2013, he spoke twice publicly about the movie, saying that he had just lost the magic and was embarrassed by the movie he had made. Hmm. Are we going to ever going to get to see The Day the Clown Cried? No. <laughs> no. You want to know why? Yeah. Simply because it's very easy to sit in front of an audience and expound on your feelings. It's another thing to have to deal with those feelings. And in terms of that film, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed of the work. And I was grateful that I had the power to contain it all and never let anybody see it. It was bad, bad bad. It could have been wonderful, but I slipped up. I didn't quite get it. And I didn't quite have enough sense to find out why I'm doing it. And maybe there would be an answer. Mm, That's a little bit sad. Like he obviously cared a lot about this movie and like wanted it to be good. And he's just like, it was not. But I and maybe he needed the distance of those years to look back and go, oh, this isn't this isn't good. This that. Yeah, this was I was not God's gift to filmmaking to right. filmmaking. Well, and it's probably at the same time, too, like with such sensitive subject matter. subject matter. Thank you. Like you have to get that right. Ooh, yeah. yeah, you really right? do. Yeah. Like it's you got to It's so, so careful. And it sounds like. With everything going on, there's no way that it was treated properly. I don't know. I just like that's what I'm saying. Like I, all those, all those individual little like pieces that you were saying, and the fact that like no one was getting paid, and like he was having to pay people, and like he rewrote parts of it to like be more funny. It's just like, ugh. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and, it, and whether or not his heart was in it while he was on painkillers. Yeah. Right. Right. In 2015, Lewis handed his archival collection to the Library of Congress, including The Day the Clown Cried. (gasps) But apparently, only 90 minutes, unedited, without sound. Hmm. And they were given direct instructions that the movie could not be shown to the public until June of 2024. What? What? Oh. We got to be relevant for that. <laughs> oh, my God. Keep listening to this podcast until next June. That's not that long. It's We can be relevant for, like, what, seven more months? Yeah, yeah we, got, we got this. Just go to patreon.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the documentary, Der Clown, came out in 2016. It's all in German. No. And, uh, yeah, it has a lot of footage from the movie. How? And... Because they, he apparently gave them the rights to it. Like, okay. Because he's okay. interviewed throughout oh, okay, the whole okay, documentary. Okay, okay. And then there's like this modern black box theater like performance that's like to fill in the blanks. Weird. So like <clears throat> it'll be like footage of them. And then it's just like this really like modern looking thing. Oh, where, man. And um, where documentarians kind of this... trying to find <laughs> yeah, beer yeah, yeah. to fill the time. Yeah. Those. God bless them. <laughs> This documentary has also been seemingly buried. Whoa. What? Like, you cannot find it. How do you know all this? So. What are your sources? 2015. He downloaded someone the internet. Someone compiled 30 minutes of known footage and put it on YouTube. And it was quickly taken down. It was most likely footage from that. The documentary. Doco. <laughs> the documentary. The doco. The doco. 
All right, so this is where this is all going to bite me in the ass for lying to you guys. Currently, <laughs> there is a version from one year ago that has about 20 minutes of footage with no subtitles, no sound. It contains all the important plot beats, including the ending. Okay. Okay. So when were we supposed to record this podcast? Like maybe two weeks ago was when we were originally supposed to record. Yeah, that's when I was like just coming out of yeah. COVIDness. Okay. So this video existed on YouTube for a year. <gasps> and it's gone. Oh my God. When? When? Within the last week. What? No. Oh my I God. I should have downloaded it. Oh. I fucking should have downloaded it. I have timestamps that point out all the beats of the plot, like no. showing what happens in each scene, and it shows the ending. But who still cares enough about this to be taking these videos down? I know, down? right? Like, who's, like, scrubbing the internet going, like... No. Like, Jerry well, Lewis's Jer estate listen, is, like, look, no. <laughs> I'm Jerry Jeez. Lewis's estate manager, and he said no one should see this movie until June of 2024. And <laughs> God damn it, I'm doing my job. Well, no, don't blame yourself, right? Blame the blame the city of L.A. for giving me COVID. Because <laughs> okay. that's, that's what... Fuck you, L.A. Yeah. No, I mean, I blame you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, when we started this, I was like, damn it. And you were like, what's wrong? And I said... Don't worry about it. And I was sitting there frantically looking through YouTube to see if someone else uploaded, <gasps> uploaded this shit. The video? And I can't, no, I can't show it to you. So uh, I just pulled up a random one that I could find, uh, Den of Geek, and this has some behind the scenes. So this is like his opening when he's playing the clown. This is this is in the documentary, The Last Laugh. Um, okay. It's this, this little bit. Um, this is like the only footage that apparently still exists. Wait, um, is that there, there's Jerry Lewis? Jerry Was that Jerry Lewis, Lewis there? Yeah. Yes, this is Jerry Lewis. Uh, so this is the beginning of the movie. So this is all footage from the Last Laugh. Oh, this is these this is the footage. This has the footage. Ah. <gasps> wah, bah, bah, bah. So as I like hear him entertaining the kids and then mm -hmm. getting in trouble, mm -hmm. like how they're kind of walking a little. Yeah. Uh, this is the end of the movie. Holy shit! This is on here. Okay. All right. <gasps> oh this is the God. end of the movie. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell from the footage. I already, it already kind of feels like it's like, yeah, I could see why this would be not good. So, but I, fuck, <laughs> God, I was gonna show you guys. I just like I had to. I had all the the things. <laughs> the bar. There was a bar scene where he. That's where he gets in trouble. He's really drunk, and mm. that's where he gets uh, in makes trouble. Sort of, uh, sort of, him sort of Yeah, uh, when he's entertaining the children. Um, like here's a whole bit where he's like putting sticks in his mouth and acting like a walrus. Uh, the 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 scene of him loading onto the train, um, the offer when he's like being told by the Nazis to do this, and <laughs> so the last moments. Um, and the, and then you see the scene where he walks with the kids to the gas chambers mm -hmm. because they don't know what's going on. Um, Based off of the silence version version of it, because there's no audio, right? I'm like, this isn't that bad. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I don't know what the whole thing is. Maybe it's kind of drawn out. Maybe it's like if we were where where his like he looks like he's acting really well, but then you hear his actual voice. It's shit. Yeah. Like I don't know. Yeah, but it's... I was sitting there watching this, going, "This isn't as bad as people have made it." Right, out right, to right. Be. That's what I was saying. Like it's hard to tell from the footage because it didn't look like it was trying to be overly goofy in those moments. But yeah, you just yeah. But like you don't know. Like yeah, you, don't you have know. to Maybe see there's the parts whole where thing he is together. like he, maybe he can't turn off the nutty professor. Yeah. and it just yeah. like, took away from right. Kind of like yeah. kind of like how uh, Jim Carrey. When he would start doing serious roles, it was kind of like he couldn't turn off that kind of. Yeah. I mean, he's he's proven himself since, but like, uh, there's times where he just like he has that Jim Carreyness, <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. just like, you know, you need more a little more pathos, right. th Than that. So, but you watched that 20 minutes before it was mysteriously scrubbed from the internet. Yes. Okay. Um, he thinks but there, so I mean, there's like I said, there's I pictures all over the place. Yeah, with yeah, this. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, just just from like the look of it, like I, I I feel like this movie could be made, but again, if done well, smart, yeah. So I mean, like when you yeah. see a picture like this where he has his nose in a in, in a barbed, barbed wire, wire fence, yeah. like is this this is the, it just it it continues that idea that this movie. It's just a comedy. A silly comedy. Yeah. Right. 
uh, Jerry Lewis died August 20th, 2017 at the age of 91. Dude was hella old. That's so, yeah, yeah I was like, that's so. Grapefruit diet, baby. Right, right. When you were saying um, Perkadan, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, just going back and forth. Um, no, when you were saying that he was like talking about this movie in 2013, I was like, that was only 10 years ago, shit. Yeah. Was it worth it? I mean, what? I mean, can we say? No, no, I don't. Th- I mean, I don't think we can say, but I'm also like maybe going to just say no because it feels like it was a lot of trouble. Like he spent a lot of money on it. People didn't get paid like poor Joan O'Brien, like didn't get her money for her screenplay ever. Yeah. And it seems like it's probably it probably wasn't that good of a movie. Like if yeah. like four or five people who no matter what the intentions were of everybody involved, if the four or five only people who have seen it were like, oh, yeah, it's not good. It's like. Yes. Okay. Then it's probably not good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say no, having never seen or heard of this movie ever in my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's not worth it. After what now, fifty years, fifty plus years, and it's still just kind of like this weird, nebulous, sad thing. Like, yeah. def- definitely not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel for the guy. Like to like be so passionate about something just to mm. see it like crumble. And then in hindsight, no, like, oh, yeah, and that was not good. This thing that I really loved and was really passionate about was not good. Like, yeah, that's that, – I mean, that's an interesting point. I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but, like, like maybe we have. Listeners will let us know. But, like, the, the idea of what's worse, someone taking your work and failing at it or you failing at your own work. You know, I, for, for, Ooh, speaking this is from an uh, existential question. Uh, speaking for, as a as a professional failure, um, <laughs> yes. I have a lot of experience yes. in this. Please, please tell us about uh, failing. Failing at your own thing that you're super passionate about is worse than someone taking your thing and failing at it. Because hmm. yeah, yeah, you, you only have, have one no person to blame, one to blame exactly. but yourself. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So yeah. I think I think they're bad in, in different ways because, yeah, like if you fail at your own thing, yes, you only have yourself to blame. But if someone else fails at your thing, you're going to I feel like you're going to have more like resentment and more because you're just going to be like, well, if I had just done that, I would have done it. I would have crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's never, a bit of hope in yeah, there, like yeah. whether, whether yeah. that's it's real or not. It's kind of like this Schrodinger's box situation where you're just like, <laughs> yeah. you'll never actually know if you could have done a better job or whatever. You know True. what I mean? Whereas like if you do your own thing and you fail and you're like, well, shit, you know, and like I think it's maybe easier to come to terms with that. I don't know. As an also professional failure, um, <laughs> it is easier, I think, though, to have someone else to blame. Just be like, well, that motherfucker ruined my thing, son of a bitch. You know, like, yeah, that's that's like, <laughs> it has it easier to, to blame someone else. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you might have yeah. that chip on your shoulder, but at the same time, you can't, you know, there's no way that you can be like, well, I failed. Like, no, like I did. Yeah. yeah. My idea was great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah that's true. Um, As a professional successful person, I don't, I don't, I can't identify with what you guys are talking about. I've just done so well. Yeah, it does not compute, does it? Oh, his failure algorithm has uh, failed. <laughs> oh. Now what? I don't know. He found a bypass. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think that uh, if you were going to have uh, all, if you were going to make this story work, you had to be firing on all cylinders. And not be struggling with money, struggling with painkillers, yeah, like no. yeah. uh, there's lawsuits too... and right. and in your own hubris, like yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff is okay for a movie like Empires of the Deep, where it's just like it's a ridiculous fantasy yeah, movie right? about like a fish man who's also a prince or whatever the <laughs> fuck that movie's about, you know. But like this movie, it's like no, like this is deadly serious. Like yeah. you gotta like like you said, be firing on all cylinders and have your shit together exactly to attempt something like yeah. this. And and so it, it is kind of, it is kind of I, that that quote of him saying, "I came to realization how bad it was, and I'm so grateful that I had the ability to contain it." Yeah, like that's pretty crazy. I know. I love that. Like what? No, he said something like the power or something like that. Yeah, like he was like yeah. the power to contain yeah. it. Like it was like this like. This crazy, uncontainable thing. And he's like, but I'm fucking Jerry Lewis. Yeah, yeah, Because, right. like, because, yeah, he probably was like, squash, squash, squash. Yeah. It's and the ghost, still happening. It's the ghost of Jerry Lewis yep, yep. taking that shit off of YouTube. 
I feel like this is one of those stories that it's it's a fun like urban legend, like the mystery of like what happened to the footage and wait, was it edited and who did that? And the fact that it's like it was on YouTube and then it wasn't on YouTube and they made a documentary and now no one can watch that documentary. Like those kinds of things, sort of like the myth that's built up around it. That kind of stuff is is fun and interesting. Are we not sh- positive that Jerry Lewis wasn't part of the Illuminati? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe I mean, it's big, big Jerry awesome. Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, big Lewis. <laughs> that's, that's big Lewis. He was a member of Big Lewis. Um, <laughs> but this, it's not as fun to talk about as like Empires of the Deep because, again, like Empires of the Deep, just it's on nonsense. its face is nonsense. Yeah. And so it's more fun to just talk about the fact that like this movie failed and never came out and like listen to all this crazy shit that happened. But like this one's almost, there's like a little bit of like sadness to it. Yeah, because, like I said, this was going to be kind of heavy. Because, yeah. I mean, like that clip, like that, that clip, you just kind of, you, yeah. feel, you feel for him failing right. so hard. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like interesting, but not like. Fun. Not as fun <laughs> to talk about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel for you, Jerry. We're brothers in failure. <laughs> So, uh, I wanted to bookend uh, both of this this episode because it was kind of a heavy topic. I wanted to bookend uh, with uh, some humor, and so beginning, I threw you guys through a ruse. But um, at the end here, let's we're gonna do a side shit show. Side shit show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, someone submit a, a jingle. A for jingle, that. yeah. Guys, um, we need jingles. <laughs> um, and... Otherwise, you're just gonna keep hearing this shit every <laughs> episode. Side shit show. <laughs> Uh, in 1997, a young upcoming comic by the name of Patton Oswalt <gasps> gets his hands on a copy of the screenplay. Ooh. Oh, my God. The Day the Clown Cried. Being a film nerd and film historian and finding the mere concept hysterical, Oswald began performing live readings in <gasps> L.A. Oh, my God. He performed this with David Cross, Bob Odenkirk, Paul F. Tompkins, Brian Posen, Laura Milligan, Scott Ackerman, Dave Foley, and Toby Huss as Jerry Lewis, the clown. Uh, Toby Huss, um, you when you see him, you'd recognize him. Uh, he he uh, one of my favorite things he did was he was the weird electrician in Down Periscope. Um, <laughs> When... Ian, Ian, nobody knows what the fuck you're talking yeah, okay. about. Please Whatever. give anyway, us a, most, a more relevant. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows from Down Periscope. You know, Down but... Periscope. <laughs> the fuck that movie's is... funny. Ian, <laughs> nobody knows this movie. <laughs> no, you son of a bitch. Give us a more relevant movie. Kelsey. <laughs> I didn't know you guys would Jesus, uh, oh Jesus Christ. throw me under the bus for that one. No, that's so okay. That's hold, good. hold on. I'm gonna give you guys a more relevant thing here. What, Toby Huss. Yeah, let me see. He mostly does like he does side bits on television. <clears throat> He yes. played he played Weird Al's dad in Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Okay, there you go. That's pretty recent. Okay. Okay. When Huss wasn't there, it was Jay Johnston. Anybody know who that is? <laughs> No. Uh, was he, he was... also in Down Periscope? <laughs> no, he was. He, he was uh, one of my favorite bits. Things that he did. He was uh, one of the cops in Arrested Development. He was also the voice of Jimmy Pesto. Was oh. because he was caught. Oh, at scandal Jan- January sixth. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Uh, this. This. Um. These. This readings. These are free. This was a free event that was word of mouth only. Uh, but it grew enough that a newspaper reached out and Oswald gleefully told them the details. Uh, their next show, Oswald is served a cease and desist as he enters the theater. Oh, my God. So as the audience starts arriving, Oswald sits with the rest of the cast, reading over the letter, freaking out a little bit. Is this going to put the theater in itself, like theater itself in jeopardy? Was Jerry Lewis still that powerful? Apparently still is. The ghost of Jerry <laughs> yeah. Lewis. Then uh, Oswald is told someone is here to see him. (gasps) This is from Patton Oswald's memoir, Silver Screen Fiend. I was confronted by the single douchiest looking adult male I'd ever seen. (laughs) All the worst aspects of one, a jock, two, a shrill NPR listener, three, a wannabe alpha male, and four, a movie producer, which it turned out he was. So the man starts yelling about how he he had to leave his Malibu home to come stop some C-list actors from performing a script he was currently optioning. <gasps> so, uh, quote uh, from the book in. 
Uh, do you have any idea what Jerry Lewis did to this script when he got his hands on it? Any fucking idea? It's an important story and it needs to be told the way it was originally written. And I've got Chevy Chase interested in it. And you have no fucking right. Whoa. Chevy Chase. Oswald fights fights back laughing uh, in his face because he's like, Chevy Chase. Uh, in this economy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he says. Chevy Chase in clown makeup in Auschwitz. I wanted more than anything in the world to see that film. If shutting down my reading could do anything toward helping that become a reality, I felt it was my cosmic duty to man up and disappoint my audience. Oh my God. Uh, so he promises the guy he will never do this again. Like, I, mm -hmm. and, uh, but then tells the, the cast the story and they're like, well, shit. So then they had to do improv? Yes. As Oswald writes. Oh, no, really? <laughs> the lights went down, and I stepped out on stage with a cease and desist letter in my hand. I explained to the audience what had happened, boos, groans, and then piece by piece, we all improvised an evening around the fact that we'd been canceled. <laughs> Bob and David <laughs> improvised... Bob and David improvised their in interpretation of exactly what happened when the producer found out that the reading in LA Weekly... How the fuck will anyone go see our movie in Kansas if eight people watch a script reading for free in Santa Monica? <laughs> Chevy Chase was born to play a clown who leads children into a gas oven. Oh, man. Jesus Christ. Paul F. Tompkins did a flawless phone call between the producer of the film and Peter O'Toole, trying to snake the role of the clown away from Jerry Lewis. Toby Huss played a concerned white supremacist who took issue with the screenplay's negative depiction of the Third Reich. <laughs> And then everyone did a massive free form back and forth interpretive dance pantomime musical version of the screenplay. Sloppy, hilarious, and impossible to sue. What else could you ask for in an evening of theater? Oh my God. That sounds I would give... fucking great. <laughs> I would give anything. <laughs> you got a portal gun. <laughs> go, 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 go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back, guys, it was so good. Uh, I can die happy. I, uh, I can. The minute you said they had to improvise, like that's of course is very important and very you know very important to me, right? But with just the simple cast that you said and everything that you were saying about what they did, I would give anything to have seen seen this. that, right? Would oh my so god, so good. Bob Odenkirk and David Cross. Yeah, like uh, doing a retelling, well. basically playing a game of day in the life of, yeah. of, of an act, of a scene that just barely happened. Oh my god, that would have been yeah, so right? hilarious to see. <laughs> um, I really wish that producer stayed to watch what they did. So just uh, watch them just tear his ass apart. <laughs> on stage. Do we know who that producer was? Uh, no, no. It might I be came the guy down from my Malibu it. home. <laughs> oh, fuck I had to you. come all the way down here to East Los Angeles. Uh, this is how Oswald wraps up that story. I stayed true to the promise I gave to Soy Spasm, the producer. I never once did another reading of The Day the Clown Cried in Los Angeles. Every other reading I did was in New York. If it makes him feel any better, mm -hmm. I tried my best to avoid any C-list entertainers. I hope he considers Stephen Colbert, Will Arnett, and Fred Willard at least B-list. I mean, they're no Chevy Chase. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. What, what year was this again? 2000... Uh, that was uh, 97. That was back in 97? 97? Yeah. Wow. So then he yeah. kept doing Oswald that. Oswald was like nobody at yeah, this yeah, point. Yeah. So yeah. then he kept doing those readings in New York, though. And, like, apparently that motherfucker never did anything with that script. <laughs> yeah, because so. he just didn't heard about it. Because I haven't heard of that Chevy Chase movie. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the redone <laughs> version with him. Wow. Yeah. But how did he get his hands on the script? I, I mean, like I said, it's been online for years. Like Okay. Uh, but the real one, the pre-whatever. No, the Jerry Lewis version. Oh, the Jerry Lewis version. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's why he was upset. That's, that's another part of the, this multi-part thing of what this producer was upset about is because they were not only doing the script, but Jerry the Lewis. The bad version They were doing the bad yeah. version yeah. of it. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe whoever the fuck pulled that video down is a producer who's still trying to he's make this still fucking still trying movie. to option. Yeah. yeah, whatever. He's holed up in his Malibu home just being like, I will find every piece. Just <laughs> Google's Day of the Earth. <laughs> Day yeah. of the Clown cried every day. No, 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 no. They've got a Google alert and an assistant to do that <sighs> stuff for them. So fucking angry. Dude, that thing had like 100,000 views on it. It was a year ago. Whatever. The ghost of Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Son yeah. of a bitch. <laughs> uh, I, like to, I like to think that it's good old Jerry. If we say Glavin three times into a mirror, <gasps> will he appear? <laughs> oh, my God. 
Oh my God. <laughs> no, <laughs> Hank Azaria will. Hank yeah. Is, that's preferable. What? That's preferable, yeah. actually. I'm not Harry Shearer. <laughs> no, hey. That's it. That's the end. Yeah, that's the end. All right. Final thoughts. Um, pray to the ghost of Jerry Lewis for us um, that we will all. <laughs> yeah, this not episode be actually anymore. gets comes out. Oh my god! Can you oh god, imagine? Is it recording? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we have to release like a mini episode that's like, you guys, holy shit, the tapes were wiped. <laughs> right. Yeah, we- some Hollywood Malibu producer contacted <laughs> us out of nowhere. Wait, is that someone knocking at the door? But we better go get it. It might be that Hollywood producer telling us to cease, both cease and desist. desist. Yep. Dude, that'd be so fucking scary if we opened this and I like went to edit the episode and just it's like all oh, yeah, it's like cr- like just this episode yes. or something. Just white noise. But then we would have to No. Ooh, I hate it. Oh, then, that'd be so fucking cool. But then we'd have to do an episode. Helmet dark. Helmet dark. <laughs> but then we'd have to pull a patent and do an episode about us doing this episode. And then, yeah, oh that would be amazing. Amazing. Ian, you want to do improv with me? (laughs) Fuck off. God, stop asking. (laughs) 